The people of Central Asia are as diverse as its geography, and the demographics are a product of its long and complex history. Hello, I am your host David, and this is Eurasia. Without further ado, let's talk about the ethnic groups of Central Asia right now. Central Asia, defined differently by many, will be defined in this video to include the countries of Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, and Afghanistan. There are approximately 122 million people that live in Central Asia, similar to the population of Japan today. This region has an extremely diverse set of people, so this video will go through the main ethnic groups with more than 500,000 inhabitants in the region as well as some interesting facts about each. The Karakalpaks, with about 500,000 people, live in western Uzbekistan today. Unlike the further related Uzbeks, the Karakalpaks are much more related to the Kazakhs, Kyrgyz, and Siberian Tartars. This includes the fact that, unlike the Uzbeks, the Karakalpaks are a traditionally nomadic people. However, within the past 100 years, since they have been distanced from the Kazakhs, they have adopted some Uzbek and Tajik words and traditions. In Karakalpak, Karakalpak means black hat, related to their unique black hats which they wear. Living near the Aral Sea, the Karakalpaks have been the people most affected by the Aral Sea environmental disaster since the 1980s. With a surprising 500,000 Koreans, Central Asia is home to the most Koreans outside Korea and the Western world itself. This is due to a unique policy enacted by Stalin during World War II which, suspicious of Korean-Japanese collaboration, moved Koreans from Russia's Far East to Central Asia. Though Stalin tried to have the Koreans accept Central Asian cultures and traditions, this ultimately failed. Ironically, many Central Asians today are starting to dress like Koreans, listen to Korean music, and learn Korean, especially in cities. In many cities throughout Central Asia, especially in the Fergana Valley, Koreans make up more than 2% of the population. A byproduct of the Great Purge, the Tartars of Western Russia and Crimea found their way to Uzbekistan today thanks to their forced removal in the 1940s and 1950s. They are very similar to their Russian and Crimean counterparts today. However, most retain lots of their culture while also having adopted some Uzbek words and traditions, unlike the Russian and Crimean Tartars, who have more or less accepted Russian and Ukrainian culture, language, and traditions today. With approximately 800,000 people, the unknown Aymak people make up a good percentage of the population of Afghanistan. Mainly a Persian people, they speak a Persian-based language. Interestingly though, they are a nomadic people. This is likely something that they learned from the Turkic influence from the north. However, it is important to note that the Aymak is a blanket term used to cover all the Persian-speaking nomadic people of Afghanistan, and some of the tribes are very different from one another. The third largest ethnic group in Afghanistan, the Hazaras, amount to about 2.8 million people today in Afghanistan. Though the origins of the Hazaras is quite unknown, it is believed that the Hazaras are a mix of Mongoloid, Turkic, and Iranian people. The Hazaras were mistreated horribly during the Taliban period in Afghanistan, and have been active supporters of the modern government of Afghanistan. Though the majority of Russians live in Russia, the result of Russian colonization brought millions of Russians to Central Asia. By 1990, about 10 million people, or nearly 8% of Soviet Central Asians, were Russian. However, with the collapse of the Soviet Union, many of these Russians returned to Russia. Today, only about 4 million Russians still live in Central Asia. The result of Russian colonization meant that most Central Asians not in Afghanistan speak Russian today, and many have adopted Russian lifestyles. Most cities in Central Asia today, outside of Afghanistan, speak Russian as their lingua franca and not their country's ethnic language, including Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, and Tajikistan, who all have Russian as one of their official languages. 
It is likely that the population of Russians in Central Asia will decrease in the future. The Russians are also the largest non-Muslim population of Central Asia. The Kyrgyz people, with about 5 million people mostly located in Kyrgyzstan, are the first people group in this list that have their own country in the region. Kyrgyzstan, or literally home of the Kyrgyz people, is home to about 7 million people in the east of Central Asia, where about 4.6 million of the Kyrgyz people live. Another 250,000 live in Uzbekistan, while the rest live in other places around Central Asia. The Kyrgyz people are closely related to the Kazakh neighbors to the north, and are traditionally a nomadic people. Due to their nomadic past, the Kyrgyz people are known to eat lots of meat and dairy products. The Kyrgyz people are also well known for their unique hats, called kalpaks, that represent the tall, snow-capped mountains of the traditionally Kyrgyz lands. On the other side of Central Asia, the Turkmen have their own country in the form of Turkmenistan. There are nearly 5.5 million Turkmen in Central Asia, where about 5 million of them live in Turkmenistan. The other 500,000 are split evenly between Afghanistan and Uzbekistan. The Turkmen are well known for their dances and national attire. They are also well known for their unique carpets, which can be reflected on their national flag. With more than 13 million Kazakhs in Central Asia, the Kazakhs make up the fourth largest ethnic group in Central Asia. While about 12 million Kazakhs live in Kazakhstan, another 1 million live in Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan. The Kazakhs are very similar to the Kyrgyz in the south, but their lives have been much more characterized by the different flat steps which they have had to make their lives out of. And, of course, the Kazakhs are traditionally a nomadic people too. Notably, there are nearly 2 million Kazakhs who live in China today. However, many are fleeing to Kazakhstan, Russia, and Mongolia today due to religious persecution. The Pashtuns make up a large portion of the population in Afghanistan, at about 14.7 million people, or a little less than half of the population. The Pashtuns are a Persian people tracing their roots back to Iran, and their traditions, culture, and language shows this. They have long been the leaders of South Asia, and continue to have lots of influence in the Afghan government. The Tajiks make up the second largest ethnic group of Central Asia, at about 20 million people. The Tajik people are, like the Pashtuns, a Persian people, and their language and culture resembles this. Today, however, there is a deep divide in Tajiks, as half of them live in Afghanistan, while another half live in Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. Tajikistan itself, in fact, has less Tajiks than Afghanistan, which is a byproduct of the Great Game between Russia and Great Britain. The northern Tajiks have adopted many Russian words into their language, as well as Russian cultures, and most speak Russian today as well. While in Afghanistan, Tajiks have not been affected by Russian colonization. The Uzbeks are the largest ethnic group in Central Asia, mainly in eastern and central Uzbekistan. The Uzbeks number to about 35 million people. Approximately 27 million Uzbeks live in Uzbekistan, while another 4 million live in Afghanistan. There are about 1.5 million Uzbeks in Tajikistan, while another 1 million live in Kyrgyzstan, with another 750,000 in Kazakhstan and 300,000 in Turkmenistan. The Uzbeks have a long history of living in Central Asia, and are likely the closest ancestors to the last great Central Asian conqueror, Tamerlane. Their food has been adopted by many of the other surrounding people groups due to its amazing flavors, and their national clothes and dances are known all around the world. Within every ethnic group of Central Asia, there is an amazing and beautiful culture waiting to be found. Each group has their own unique culture, their own unique music, their own unique national dress, their own unique language, their own unique food, and so on and so forth. Moreover, though one's ethnicity is important in their individual identity, it's also important to understand that each person is unique in their own ways, and thus, their ethnicity is only one variable in the understanding of a person's overall persona. Only with getting to know these people can you truly 
and correctly understand the people of Central Asia. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and of course subscribe as well. Until next time, stay happy, stay humble, stay hopeful, and goodbye.